I used a mobile app called Pliability to see if I could improve my flexibility in 30 days. I was getting some hip, knee, and shoulder pain when I was doing some of my workouts, and I thought it would just kind of go away on its own, but it never did. So I figured it was time to make a change. And really the final straw, and this seems kind of unrelated, but I was at a friend's birthday party and I was sitting like crisscross applesauce and my knees were like really far above the ground showing how inflexible I was. Well, one of my friends was kind enough to call me out on that saying how stiff as a board I looked. And so now that my friends were starting to call me out on it, um, I figured, okay, I need to do something about this. It's funny how peer pressure can really be the spark to make that change. So in any case, I decided to download Pliability. And so in this video, I'm gonna be sharing how my experience with Pliability has been so far, as well as the changes that I observed when using it on a week by week basis, using it for 30 days. The reason I chose Pliability is because I recently was watching an Ali Abdal video and he had mentioned in that video that he was using Pliability to improve his flexibility. So I didn't really research any further than that. I just decided to dive into that app. I've learned in recent years that for stuff like this, it's better just to try something as opposed to spending hours on end trying to figure out what's the best app for you know whatever it is you're trying to accomplish. Uh, with Pliability, there is no free version though. They have a seven day free trial, that's it though. Then it's $18 a month. And so that's the investment with Pliability. Now for me, $18 a month, I'm fine investing in that because I value my health. And so anything that aims to improve that is a worthwhile investment in my opinion. The app itself is fairly intuitive to use. So after I signed up, it had me do the short questionnaire, just talking about myself, what my goals are, what activities I engage with. And so once I did all of that, it showed me some routines that it thought might be a good fit for me but it also showed where I can do a mobility test to see what my baseline mobility score is. And so I was interested in that, so I decided to dive into that first to see what my mobility score is. The mobility test is essentially a test where you perform an overhead squat in front of your phone camera at three different angles. As a physical therapist, I can tell you that an overhead squat is actually a really good test to determine overall flexibility because of the sheer amount of joint movement required to do the movement. Uh, it's also really strenuous if you're not used to it, so keep that in mind. And so once you do the overhead squat at three different angles, then it spits out a mobility score. And so for me, I think that my initial mobility score was a 78, but the cool thing is that it also identified the most limiting area of your body that's keeping you from getting a higher score. So in my case, it was saying that my left shoulder was the most impaired joint um, for the overhead squat, which is interesting because that was the area that hurt the most. Once I did the mobility test, I figured I needed to come up with a plan for how often I was going to use this app in order to be consistent with it. And so based off of my schedule, I reasonably figured that I could do this app six out of seven days a week and I would do routines that were 30 minutes or less on weekdays, and I could do routines that are greater than 30 minutes on weekends. They have a lot of different tracks that you can join in on, and each of the tracks has several routines that comprise of that track. I decided to start with their welcome series, which they recommend starting off with. And so this just goes over several routines, and it gives you an idea of what the movements are like within those routines. And so what I found from doing those is that Pliability takes advantage of something called low load prolonged stretching. That's basically what the routines entail. And so with this type of technique, you're basically holding different types of stretching positions for a pretty extended periods of time, anywhere from two to five minutes. And so some of the poses look exactly like yoga poses, and then some of them look more like conventional stretching movements. 
Um, some of these poses are easy to maintain for that long period of time, and some of them are quite difficult to maintain for that extended period of time. Each video is well produced and has two models demonstrating the stretches. So one of them is doing a more advanced version of a given stretch, and then the other model is doing a more beginner intermediate version. There's a narrator that guides you through each of the routines, giving you verbal cues on how to do some of the poses, as well as giving you tips to you know, remain passive through the movements. There's some guided, or there's some uh, nice background music that's kind of reminds me of like yoga music or meditation music in the background. Um, overall, it's a very good and, and calming experience. So after the welcome series, there's really two main sections to the app. There's the this week section, which has the daily routine that you can do. And then there's also a for you section, which has different tracks that you can enroll in and each of those tracks has several routine or has several routines within them that you do for a certain number of weeks to achieve whatever goal that the track has for you. Um, I decided to do the daily routine approach just because none of the tracks really appealed to me that much. However, I will say that in the for you section, there's also a section called based on your mobility test. And so these are routines that specifically target the weaknesses observed in the mobility test. So I thought that that was really neat. Um, but for me, most of the routines that I did were just the daily routines that are found on the This Week tab. So the way that I used pliability during my week is that on weekdays, I would do whatever the daily routine is. Usually the daily routines are less than 30 minutes, but usually once a week, they do give you like a 45 minute workout. And so in that case, if that fell on a weekday, I would just pick another routine that was more around the 25 to 30 minute mark. And then on weekends, I would actually look at routines that were longer than 30 minutes. So a lot of the routines you can look at are more in the 45 minute range. And so since I have more time on weekends, I figured I would do the longer routines then. Since doing pliability for 30 days, I've definitely seen quite a few improvements. And as I was going through, I actually wrote down some observable differences that I encountered on a week by week basis. So I just wanna break down sort of the week by week things that I noticed since using pliability consistently for 30 days. So during week one, the main challenge that I encountered is the routines often have you start in this tall saddle position where you basically sit your butt on your heels, which can be very uncomfortable if you're not used to it. And I had a lot of trouble doing that and I often had to modify it to make that more comfortable. The other thing that I noticed is I would get sort of like a tingling sensation in my legs. Uh, which is kind of indicative of sciatica. I would get that with certain poses. Uh, the main benefit that I noticed after week one is that my knee pain completely went away. So I would often get knee pain when I would do squats. And after week one, that was gone. I did not have any knee pain after that. After week two, I noticed that I was able to do the tall saddle position much easier. So it would still take about 30 seconds for me to ease into the position, but afterwards I was able to maintain a tall saddle position without a tremendous amount of discomfort. It was okay. The other thing that I noticed, and this is like super random, but when I put on my shoes, I often will like throw my feet on my bed like one foot at a time and put my shoe on or whatever. And that was like a tight thing for me to do. Like my hips felt tight with doing that sort of emotion. But I noticed that after week two, I could throw my foot up on the bed and everything just felt more loose and more flexible. So that was sort of a random thing that I noticed. After week three is when I noticed the largest amount of improvements. So one of the improvements is that I could hold a deep sumo squat position for four minutes. So previously when I was doing the pliability routines where they had you do sumo squats, I could only hold the position for maybe 30 seconds to a minute. So that improved drastically as well as just my comfort level with being in that position. Another thing is that I was able to like reach my hands behind my back and interlock my fingers. That was something I wasn't able to do before. I would always have to use a strap to do that position. And then the other thing that was really helpful is my sciatica symptoms went away. So when I was doing those poses that would cause the tingling sensations in my legs, after week three, I noticed that that wasn't happening much at all anymore. The only downside that I noticed during this week 
is that I noticed that my box jumps felt weaker. Now, box jumps are not a part of pliability. This is like one of my separate workouts that I do. But I noticed that my box jumps felt weaker. And I remember when I was studying in PT school, one of the things that we learned is that when you were actively work on your flexibility, one of the things that can become lessened is your peak power output. And so because box jumps are an explosive and require a lot of power, um, those were weaker that, that when I was doing my uh, exercise that week. So I don't know if the two are actually correlated or if it just happened to be an off week, but I just found that to be an interesting thing to note. After week four, I noticed that my hip pain started going away. So before when I was doing positions that involved a lot of hip flexion, such as the deep lizard pose or the, um, what's it called? The uh, happy baby position, I would get hip, uh, I would get pain at the front of my hip. And so after week four, that pain completely went away. So after I did 30 days of pliability, I decided to do my mobility test again to see how that changed from baseline to uh, after 30 days. And so here's the before and after. And truth be told, the different, the visual difference isn't staggering. If you can, if you can tell, I am able to reach further back when I'm in an overhead squat position, but it's nothing that drastic. And my flexibility, flexibility score didn't go up much. I think it only went up one point. So <laughs> that felt, uh, well, it didn't feel defeating, but I was—I guess I was expecting a little bit more. But the main thing that I was really happy with is I, is I just felt better overall. And feeling better to me is an overall better metric. So by using pliability, it got rid of my knee pain, it got rid of my hip pain when I was doing things such as squats when working out. And while it didn't completely get rid of my shoulder pain, it definitely helped to lessen it to a degree. And then once I started doing some specific rotator cuff exercises, again, this was not pliability based, but once I started doing some separate rotator cuff exercises, now my shoulder pain is about 80% better. So pliability has been really helpful for just getting some pains to go away that were um, just sort of like adversely affecting my strength workouts. I still continue to do pliability to this day. And so if you're wondering if pliability is worth it or not, for me, it definitely is. So I think it's at least worth trying their seven day trial to see if it's something that you vibe with. Uh, I mean, I look forward to it. It's a, it's sort of a part of my day that I can just dedicate to my health. And it's also like, it's very peaceful. It's meditative. It's not overly taxing. So it's just a nice way to sort of take your mind off the stress of the day. Um, and especially like in a day and age where a lot of the work we do now is often computer work and, and people are becoming more and more sedentary. I think it is important to have some sort of a routine like this, whether it's pliability or something else to help just feel better, move better, and ultimately do something to, um, keep away any sort of pain or debilitating conditions. If you're interested in learning more about pliability, I'll leave a link in the description below. And if you found this video to be useful, it would mean a lot if you hit the subscribe button. It helps me out more than you know, and just lets me know if these videos are resonating with you. Um, now, starting any kind of a routine, such as pliability or really anything else for that matter, can require a lot of focus initially until it becomes an ingrained habit. And so if you find that you are someone Someone who can struggle with focus in that regard, then I highly recommend watching this video because um, it covers one way that I think about focus in a way that is different than maybe some other people think about it. So definitely check that out if you're interested. And until next time, I will see you in the next video. Take care.